Hello, families. Welcome to the Oikos Family Podcast, Episode 4. In fact, I would rather be saying hello, moms, today specifically. I want to talk to you, the mom who may be listening. And if you are listening or if you know somebody else who might need to listen to this, I would like to share something very important with you today. And that is, I'm going to call this podcast, Take Your Hand, because I'm going to just do a little exercise here for you. And I'm going to suggest that I take your hand today, because what I want to do is I want to share Jesus with you. Now, it might be that you know Jesus very well, and it might be you don't know Jesus at all. But either way, I'm going to share what I know of Jesus with you, because I believe that as I take your hand, I want to imagine walking through the day with you. And I want you to imagine that with me, just for today. And I'm actually doing this on behalf of Jesus, you see. (laughs) I'm thinking that if I could just step into a day and take your hand and be Jesus for you, as in, you imagine that you're taking the hand of Jesus. And so now, what does that look like? This is what I want to share with you. I want to share with you how it looks to me so that I can pass that on to you. So now I'm taking your hand and we imagine that that is Jesus taking your hand. And now as you go through the day, whatever you go to do, you've got Jesus right there with you, right beside you. As I said, whether you know Jesus well or not, what I'm going to share with you is to tell you that he is kind, he is gentle, he is loving, he is sweet-natured. And yes, he might be firm too, but today we're going to focus on the kind and gentle and sweet nature because if you can be Jesus to your children today as Jesus would want you to be, as in when you speak to them or if you give them an instruction or you're teaching them a lesson, if you constantly think of Jesus at your side and being him to them, so really imagine it, really imagine Jesus with you. That's why I said at the beginning I'm going to imagine that I'm taking your hand because I want to do this for Jesus today. I want to take your hand for him and for you, for him to walk in your day with you. So let's see how this can look. So now you've taken the hand of Jesus and you're walking through your day and you are preparing breakfast or a meal or lunch or tea or you're sitting doing a lesson and all the time you're thinking, now how would Jesus do this? Now your child has been a little bit difficult, let's say, because they're not feeling well or they don't want to be, do a particular lesson. And you've got to think, now, how would Jesus handle that? What would he do right now? I know we might all be familiar with that bracelet that says, what would Jesus do? But I'm, I'm actually really trying to be incredibly intentional about it now <laughs> while I share with you on this podcast today so that I can get you to really, really think about it, really stop. In podcast number three, I spoke about stop, which was about actually sibling rivalry. But you can use that stop in any way that works for you. It's just an acronym that you can make work for you. You can stop now and think, what would Jesus do? So in your day, don't just let it pass by your mind. I wonder what Jesus would do. Well, I don't know what Jesus would do. But actually stop and think very intentionally about it and imagine it. Imagine that it was him now doing whatever needed to be done in that moment. For example, you having a bit of resistance with your child with writing. They've got their language book out or they're having a struggle with their maths. So now you think, now I wonder how Jesus would handle this. Well, now I'm going to share with you what used to happen when I did these intentional steps when my children were younger. This is what would happen. I'll give you a little example. I would have one of my children that wasn't able to face their maths book that day for whatever reason. Maybe the day before the lesson was a bit difficult and so they're feeling a little bit concerned or afraid or negative about this maths book. So straight away, if I check with Jesus, I think, now, what would he do about this? Where, how can I make this better? I would recall the day before, and I would have these recollections that I know wouldn't have just come to me, and I wouldn't have had opportunity or spent time on thinking of them had I not called on him and asked him, okay, so now how would you handle this? Please guard me, Lord. But now because I stopped and I asked him, I would suddenly recall that the day before we should not have ended on a low note with the maths. We should not have done that. We should have seen that there was some, well, when I say we, I mean myself. I should have seen that there was a 
there was a struggle with that lesson. So I should have caught it before it became a big negative and put the book away and been intentional about, I think I said intentionable. Anyway, being intentional about um, leaving the child with a positive feeling towards their math. So let's say we were doing division, all right? And I saw that the child was really struggling. And then we said, okay, well, she, she, this is, she or he is just not coping with this. Let's, let's finish this maths lesson for today. And now I've left the child on a very low note. So now we're on the next day and I'm calling on the Lord because the child is immediately resisting maths. And then I have this recall of the day before and how we ended on a low note. How I could have ended that would have been to do some division in a practical way. For example, he has a, a tray of cookies, biscuits we call them here in South Africa. And now we're going to divide these biscuits up into equal portions so that we can give some to granny and some to the neighbor and so on and so forth. Now, we might, we may not have been planning to do that with those biscuits, but now, we, now I'm thinking intentionally, you see, because I'm thinking about how would Jesus like me to resolve this? What would he be doing with the situation? And one thing I'm sure about is he doesn't want the child to be unhappy and feel negative about maths. I'm sure about that. So now I'm, I'm the parent and I'm calling on him and I'm asking him to help me to make it better for the child. And so I recall that day before and now I'm sitting in the moment today and I'm seeing the child's got resistance. So what can I do? If it were me, I would be thinking I've got to fix the problem maybe and we've got to push on and we've got, I've got to see to that. How do I help the child to get this division lesson? But instead, because I stopped, because I called on the Lord and because I asked him to guide me, I now have some divine inspiration that comes from him, which wasn't my own. And I'm thinking, we won't do maths today. I put the maths book away immediately, and I apply the thoughts of what I should have done the day before with regard to the biscuits. And I say to the child, let's go make cookies instead. We'll do, and then the child, if it's a very studious child and wants to be able to get the lesson and doesn't like just abandoning the lesson, I've had one of those, I might say, but I want to be able to learn. I want to be able to get this lesson. I say, no, we're going to do it, but we're going to do it a different way today. We're going to go and do some applied maths. And so I don't leave the child feeling as though they can't or they, we, we're not going to do the lesson because they're not able to or capable of it or whatever. I leave, I, I rather redirect that child's thoughts and help build them up in that area. And so I take them to the kitchen and now we're going to make cookies. And then after that, we're going to do some division. Now, it might be very basic, and the, and the lesson might have been dividing multiple digits, and that's got nothing to do with cookies and dividing. But the reason why I would be redirecting that lesson is not for the sake of helping the child to be able to conquer the trouble, the difficulty they're having with being able to divide multiple digits. It would be more giving them the understanding and the bigger picture of why division is actually important and necessary and why we're even doing this division in this book because we're wanting to improve that skill and learn to be able to master it, you know, practice it and master it. So that is just one little example of taking me wanting to take your hand and suggesting to you that you take the hand of Jesus and you walk through with through the day with him and you rem remember that he's there at your side and keep thinking about that and stop, 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 stop and question, stop and ask him, what do I do? What do I do? How, how would you do this now, Lord? Give me some divine inspiration, please. And as I said, if you are saying to yourself, well, I'm not quite sure that I'll know what he would do or how he would do because my flesh gets in the way and I tend to react, and then I feel sorry for how I reacted because I became impatient. Well, all of those things you can actually change by going, you know what, Jesus wouldn't be impatient. He's got all the patience in the world. So I'm going to just repent. Sorry, Lord, for my impatience. And now I'm going to ask you to please help me with the abundance of patience that you have. See, so today that is what I wanted to share with you. I just wanted you to reflect upon him being with you in every single situation and how he wants to help you, that he's right there today for you, wanting to help you with your day. But you do need to stop and you do need to do your part. You, you need to stop and call on him and maybe even repent and, oh, sorry for that flare, sorry for that reaction that I had. It couldn't have been very pleasing. And 
even if you say you're not too sure about Jesus himself, you don't know him well enough. Well, that's why I want to say to you today that I'm, I'm telling you that he's all those wonderful things. Just think of what a beautiful mother you want to be for your children. You want to love them and adore them and you want it to be excellent and you want to be that kind of mom. And so that kind of mom that is in your heart, you don't want to be an angry mom. You don't want to be an impatient mom because you love your children. You want the very best for your children. So that little feeling that you have of wanting the best for your children is multiplied and multiplied and multiplied the way God wants it for you. So it's bigger and bigger and bigger. So you see, you can just tap into what you already have, and that is a heart that wants to love and protect and nurture and help your children. And maybe you feel you're not doing that very well. Well, that's why I'm suggesting to take your hand and to imagine it as being the hand of Jesus and letting him help you. So I just want to thank you for stopping and listening to this podcast. And I really, really hope that you will cling on and hold on to that hand. Don't let go. Every single day, remember that he is there to help you through your day. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.